right, recently we just moved into a new house. Um, it's a Victorian style, which is something I've, I've loved. Just a precaution, just in case. It was an old house, has a lot of history to it. Built in 1914, um, was a VA home for a while, got a little bit of history on it. Starting to get in our new house, it's exciting, stressful, moving. for a place to have activity, but right. at least using my gifts and what she's growing in, mm -hmm. into hers, we wanted a place that had at least positive energy. Right, right. Something that, you know, we didn't have to come home and have to bless the house every time we come home, you know, right. we don't have to deal with that. <clears throat> so, we'll go ahead and show you the rest of the place here. And I was talking with Eric and Casey and they were telling me about how they had moved into a new house and how they'd had a little bit of activity coming out, going on, but not a whole lot. We have neighbors live next to us that lived there for over 40 years, so they have a lot of first-hand accounts. And then the, a neighbor across the street that she uh, has connection to the house. And then we have somebody that Casey works with whose, I guess, grandparent used to run it when it was a VA home. So. We have all these little connections and the abstract history, which is nice, so. Being a third bystander, they wanted me to come in and see if I picked up on anything or if I noticed anything as well. But yeah, you could tell this was where Fire Marshal even used to be here, because see, see the little sign on the door? And this is the old alarm system. Yeah, this is the old. Isn't that cool? And one of these stories that the neighbors next door had mentioned was that there used to be a fire escape hanging out the back of where the upstairs bathroom is now located. So that has since been taken down, um, just a unique piece of history. And it's always nice to find these things out from neighbors that have lived there for many, many years. The coat hooks and stuff, you can tell it went into the kitchen but then they remodeled the kitchen and they removed the stairway out which nobody understands why and we will probably put it back well i have to probably put it back yeah these are uh back when they used to do fuel for their heating hmm. pretty hollow as you can hear Pretty spacious. Our room's just off that wing, then our awesome bathroom. So I'm gonna show you the place that you're gonna be staying tonight with Lovely. us. The first guest in our guest bedroom. So what kind of activity have you had happen here? <laughs> Funny you ask. Um this house hasn't had it's not very active at all whatsoever. Occasionally there's a few things, mostly upstairs that we've noticed, um, but not a haunted house as you know, as you might think, but tell them about the experience that you had with Scooby. Oh, I was just laying downstairs sleeping and I woke up to hearing somebody walking upstairs and kind of caught his attention. Scooby, come here Scooby. This is the only room in the house he will not come in, and this is the room of the lady of the house. He just will not come in here. Scooby! What's wrong? Seeing something? Keep looking over here. Then one time, there's one night, it was about 4 or 4.30 a.m., I woke up because if I heard shuffling, and I didn't know that she was up, but she was awoke because she had heard the shuffling, too. We didn't know that until we talked to each other so but yeah so 
that's something we, I mean, as we moved in, I did come up and I did cleansing in the house as you move out anything just in case. Right. And uh, did make peace, kind of introduced myself and stated that I now live here and that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, but nothing really happens in physical activity, like doors don't open and slam or, you know, things don't move, you know, visuals, you know, apparitions, nothing of that nature. But we, we haven't done any... K2 work, I guess put it bluntly, we haven't investigated our own house. Okay. <laughs> so, but spiritually, what I pick up on, of course, I try not to be open the, all the time, as you know, and right, right. close down occasionally. But if I had to say, where if there's any activity or the greatest chance of anything, mm -hmm. this room. Okay. It's kind of the, and it could be something to do with this closet, mm -hmm. possible portal, possible whatever, a place mm -hmm. where. She, because it's a woman that's played to be. Is the lady here? See if you can go in there, feel comfortable enough, and pull the door shut behind you. What's your name? What do you want from me? Did, I, did the K2 go off? Mm-hmm. I thought I heard it. Yep. Okay. It went up to red. Have you got any strange feelings with her being <clears throat> out? Or is there, is, does it, do you feel anything different and then you start to notice her? Or mm -hmm. Is it just kind of randomly, random starts? Mm -hmm. Like you said before? Okay. Yeah, very random. Right. Right. I would say your presence is comparable to the old man ghost at your mom's. Yeah. Just kind of, kind of done. Not yeah. very active, but yeah. when she wants to be known, she'll let you know. Right, <laughs> right. Um, so this is Jackie. I'm up in the guest bedroom over at Eric's house. And um, earlier, um, I did some walk around the K2 a little bit, see if I got any readings that may or may not be electrical, etc and kind of got the basic layout of the room itself. It is 10.48 and it is January the 24th of 2015 and I do have a light off to the side too as well. Just so. So that's all that right over there. So I've got it spaced out really good. You can come up to the slide over here and you can touch it, you can walk by it, and you can make it move. You can make it light up for me if you want. Thank you. Okay, alright, can you back up from it now? Thank you. Are you just playing now? Alright. <laughs> Alrighty, so if you're a female, can you make that light flash again? Alright, thank you. Did you used to live here? What about work here? Did you used to work here?
Yeah. Do you have brown hair? Yeah? Are you the one who's always in here and who Eric and Casey here occasionally? If that's you, if you're here, can you walk around or yeah, can you walk around or make any noise? Can you tap on the wall? Loud noise, I don't know what that was. Kinda sound like it came from the closet area, but a little higher. Was that you? I understand being scared. I'm scared of a lot of things too. Sometimes it's the weakness of being scared that makes you the strongest sometimes. But it's all about how you move forward from that being scared. Do you like Eric and Casey living here? You do? So that's our kind of test for tonight as well, just to see if the door moves at all. Once again, like I said before, you can move the door, just please do not slam it. And if you do, you can do like a light shut, but don't slam it. <laughs> please. And thank you, it'd be much appreciated on my part. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Besides all that though, I mean, she seems very, not so much malicious, but just very curious and very, a little bit standoffish because it's just kind of, yeah. It's a lot, it's really interesting to learn about your own house, especially since it's something that we've done being paranormal researchers. But, I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see what happens and see what the evidence has. Pretty much confirmed the whole female spirit thing and uh, it makes sense if it was somebody who worked here during its operation as a VA. Um, I'm sure there's more that we'll learn from her over time, over the years of living here. Got to see Eric's new place. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's a lot bigger than the apartment, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, it's just cool to catch up, see what he's up to. And no, 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 it was something weird. I don't know if I'm getting crazy or not. Do you guys have a ghost here? <laughs> Did Jackie tell you? No. She kind of has a less tolerance for men in general, um, in part because of the era she grew up in and everything. Actually, I'm being watching the. And I don't know if it's me or not, but I've been seeing like something picking out that thing. Oh, uh, it's like a kind of blur, a shadow or something, like moving out the room. That's the wall, right? Behind the wall, like moving. Yeah. So Amaya had a very interesting moment with um, the bathroom here at Eric's house. She went to use the restroom and ended up seeing a lady in the mirror behind her and uh, she brought it up to us and Eric happened to have a photo of the lady of the house which he didn't show her at first she described to us and then decided that she wanted to see the photo when I was in the bathroom I saw this girl behind me and she had dark hair 
and it was kind of like in a messier bun. And I would say more like, I don't know, I think she kind of like had a high collar. I'm not sure. But she had darker hair and she's Caucasian. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were talking about the lady of the house and how Brad has, has left and the room was empty. And everyone was talking about how their experience with her. And I said, well, I'm, I've never experienced her. She never shows herself to me. And, you know, we think her name is Mary. So I thought, well, God, I want to... I want to get to know her, you know. I'm nervous to see <laughs> Oh my god. Are you scared? Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is definitely the lady that I saw me. She's not I'm about to start crying. I'm about to start crying. I didn't feel the light was coming. I thought, I thought I was just crazy. She's definitely not far, but she's not in here. I don't know. I mean, it's, um, kind of, I'm a little bit scared to see her, but I want to see her. I mean, Why would you be scared to see her? You hunt ghosts for years, Mary. I know, but, I mean, they haven't come out to me. I mean, I've only seen one apparition in my life. Yeah. And so I don't feel like they want to, want to show themselves to me. The last time I was here, you and I actually had a pretty deep-hearted discussion about your past and the things that you had went through, and I revealed to you some pretty horrible things that had happened to me. And I think we kind of bonded over that time. And I would really like to speak to you again and maybe get a little more in depth with some of the things that have happened, not only to yourself, but to me as well. And I actually got a little emotional here because just moments ago, we just confirmed something on here and I usually don't get emotional investigations, but this one was just a little different because that came to me, or gone all the way to red. And we'd asked the unfortunate question, basically, of if she was um, the lady of my house, as we kind of refer her as, um, if she was abused. If she maybe hates men or standoffish to men because of something that happened to her when she was alive. And we got a definitive response to that. It sounded like yes, and then just chills in the whole room and just, I'd be more than happy to maybe sit and talk to you about it and maybe break the ice a little bit. Yes. Red. We're going to have India back, okay? Probably more than she has been before. Because I feel like you're alone. You're kind of isolated in this house, yes. You have me, but I'm a guy and I'm still a guy and that's how you see it. Found this at um, a place that we investigated, an old antique store. And this photo looks a lot like how this lady of the house has presented herself when she's manifested. And we're just talking. And this may or may not be you, per se, in this photo. If it is, you can make it go all the way to red again. And then we'll, we'll know for sure. But it's definitely a resemblance. It looks a lot like you. Orange. Whoa. Here you go. I'm getting chills. Red. Look at this. Does this photo look like you? Does it look kind of like you're looking in a mirror and you're noticing, hey, it kind of looks like me. I definitely have chills. What do you think? I got this photo for a reason. At the time, I just went with my instinct as I teach my investigators to do. There's something that you feel that grabs you, you go with it. And this ended up coming home with me for some reason. You're still kind of a protector in your own right. I've noticed that. You've kind of started kind of watch over me a little bit when I was here, haven't you? A reason that she's standoffish with men and stuff is she also went through abuse similar to like what India had done here. When she was alive, she probably was, I don't want to say horrible, but yeah. abused in multiple ways. And 
and she's, it took her a little bit to kind of come out for that, but when she did, it was, it went to red. Right, right. Multiple times. Yeah. Right on. And now we're talking to her about the possibility of changing roommates, as I always do. I make a tradition, just like when um, Casey and I li lived here, talk to her about the state of the house and how she didn't feel about Casey when you live in here. And remember, that took about five, six months for the warm up to us. Mm -hmm. She knows our take on it also. You know, the fact that you guys are respectful to women, that, you know, you, she can trust you guys. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But there's no reason for her not to. Mm -hmm. But that's the other thing that we found out too why she's still here. A good idea of it you know, is because of the fact that she didn't want to be at home. So when she came here, it felt better, felt more safe, right. secure. So that's why she's still here now. Thank you for the, it was just something was telling me. He's like, bring Andy upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. This is why. Yeah, it was great. I actually, uh, I haven't spoken to the woman upstairs in Eric's house for a long time. And it was kind of long overdue and she opened up a lot and gave us a lot more detail. And, you know, I'm not surprised that she opened up to me because her and I both have something in common. We both survived a domestic relationship, a, a violent relationship. And um, she is to the point of where she hates men also, just like me. So I think that's that's kind of going to be our my vantage point with her is that her and I can probably talk easily about certain things that she can't talk to about with most people because of that reason because mm -hmm. I've actually lived that experience myself. Kind of give somebody give both of us a little bit of relief to talk to each other again. And so we did a session in the uh, the room that used to be Lady of the House's room when I first moved in, um, and we've had a couple roommates live in there since uh, the Casey and I lived here days since those days. Um, so she kind of shifted around. She seemed to kind of move um, in other rooms of the house. It seems like. While we were having our discussions, Mary finally saw the door peeking shadow. I saw from the bathroom door, I just saw like a shoulder, like a red shoulder. Just uh, Mary claims that she had seen, seen exactly that, the door peeker thing, but it was from the bathroom, um, just looking down past us on the other side of the house. I mean, it was just a red shoulder, definitely a red shoulder. And so... I guess I have now seen, at least that's what she, that's how much she's appeared to me. And I'm like, yay, <laughs> you know, and now, you know, the door is open for her. So then she had to go to the bathroom and I congratulated her first, not for having to go to the bathroom, but for um, basically for having to, uh, the experience to see the lady of the house. And we were so proud, it was like a birthday moment. So I gave her a hug. So I finally, Went in there, started doing my business, and all of a sudden, uh, they came up, Eric and Jarrett, and pounded on the door. <laughs> Mary, did that push the shit out of you? No, I'm funky. <laughs> What had just happened here is that Mary had to go to the bathroom, but she finally, after all these months, or almost over years, she's been wanting to have a lady of the house experience at my house. Well, she did finally. And then she had to go to the bathroom, but we're giving her a hard time because, uh, because she saw her in the bathroom and being a ghost hunter, for Christ's sakes, she's afraid to go to the bathroom. So she came into the bathroom kind of asking her, don't mess with me, please, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, Jared and I seized the opportunity. Made me scream. <laughs> it's quite funny, actually. And, and then I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> so uh, it was a fun time. Out, and I'm just gonna, you know, 
uh, let her uh, see if there's any experience that we might get. Um, I want to come up here as I always do when somebody leaves. Let me turn this on. When someone leaves this place, you usually let me know how you felt about them. You, let me, you were pretty quick to let me know when Nate left how you felt about it. He only stayed for like two weeks or three. Ooh, but she did not like him. No, she hated him with a passion. Oh my goodness, that's intense, Mama. Um, there's somebody else who's reportedly who passed away in this house, Biker Dan. I don't get very much, you don't manifest as much to me as she does, but there is sometimes a presence of a male. Usually the females. Of course. Of course. You dedicated this is your mom? Yes, this is my mom, Crystal. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, very you. Okay. Yeah, it is. I'm sure it looks very... Well, it looks different from the first time that I've been here. Um, I remember being here probably about when I was 20 years old, somewhere around there, maybe 22. And we were kids, we'd been partying, we came here because we met a gentleman that was a biker. And uh, I believe his name was Dan. Okay, Dan, are you talking to me? Okay. I um, I remember the stairwell. I think this is all the further I got because when I first walked up to the house, there was an apparition on the front porch. And it was a Victorian lady, and she had her arm wrapped around the posts out here. And as we stepped up, I went to say something, and then she disappeared. So I got as far as the staircase. I said I couldn't go any further. People looked at me strange, and I left. I went back out to the car. This is the early 70s? This is the 70s. So this was still a residential home this was a, at that point? Yeah. Okay. Um, that makes sense. As I walked in the house today, I am greeted with voices. Um, the house has been saged, so it's kind of hard for them to come through. Um, must have been done just recently. Um, but I'm hearing. Okay, I, I, there's somebody here. Um, Can you talk a little bit about. So she's a clairvoyant. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's where I get my gifts from. Yeah. It's down the bloodlines. Um, She's, she always influenced me into learning and not um, denying. She was dressed in, um, let, me, let me recall now. Uh, when I saw her on the front porch, her hair was done up in a bun type thing, and she had it like a bun here. And she was dressed in a Victorian dress, and she was, um, at the time when I was here, the communication was she was a caretaker some sort of a character. And I wanted to say to Dan, you know, um, don't have any fear because you've got someone to care for you. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't her. I mean, she was here before. So I don't know if she was a nurse uh, or a, a, a person, uh, like a sister or something like that, that mm -hmm. took care of someone that was here that was an invalid yeah. before Dan. Mm -hmm. Because it happened to, you know, it happened to Victorian times. But I saw her, she was a light colored hair lady Kind of not real tall, probably maybe a little taller than me. And I'm about five seven, five six. And um, but she was on the front porch and she greeted us. Nobody else saw her but me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I said hi to her. Everybody goes, who, "Who are you saying hi to?" I said, "Didn't you see the lady on the porch?" And they said, "No." <laughs> and I thought, well, she was dressed very odd for that period of time. You know, seventies. You know, why would you be dressed mm -hmm. in a Victorian a Victorian outfit? And then she disappeared because she was gone. Mm -hmm. And then when I came into the house, I heard I heard voices. And it was a man and a woman talking. And I, it was busy. I mean, it was like, oh my God, with all the other conversation, there must have been 20 people here at that yeah. point in time. Because it was a party. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were partying. <clears throat> and everybody probably was drunk except me because I didn't drink. Mm -hmm. I don't Yep, she's the dominant one of the house. Ooh. She was here. She was here. 
She never stays in one place too long. Mary? Is it Mary Ellen? Come and talk to me. Well, come in. I feel chills behind me, but... There was a red light. Is there a, a glass, or is that another room? There was a red light next to the... Next to the green light? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's just, that's the master bedroom. There was a red light there. Okay. And it disappeared when I looked up at you. Um, she's never in one place too long, always busy, but some of the things that she was saying matched up with what I had already got and what Jarrett was getting as well, so it was validation all the way around, uh, which we appreciate when we have the chance to get that. This is mainly where she was, but again, before Brad moved in, right. that changes things a little bit. Right. She doesn't like Brad. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you that right some now. Some of those two I knew she doesn't like. Because she told me that. Yeah. Sorry, Brad. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> she doesn't, she's very particular. It took her about five months to warm up to me. That's why she comes out to women. Jackie and India both reached her first. Why do you think that is? Was she abused? Uh, yeah. Um, yes. Much. I get. Mary, if you're here, try and find out a little more. I know you've kind of been quiet. You talk to me occasionally, but it takes a little bit. Point in that okay. general direction. You and I will step out. Okay. Okay. And we'll go and make a round and walk into that room. That's fine. Because that's kind of where she kind of goes a lot yeah. now that he's in here. See, if she'll come yeah, back she to you with just a woman in here. Him. Yeah, no. that's unfortunate. He's better than my past decisions, yeah. right? Yeah. Because <laughs> she didn't like Nate. <laughs> and she let him know she would punch oh. his bed. Oh. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Mary Ellen, it's just you and I now. Can you come and talk to me? I won't hurt you. I'm not afraid of you. Can you please tell me your, is Mary Ellen your name? Can you tell this little light box? Mary Ellen is your name? Is it Mary? It's been a while since we've done a session, communicated with any possible spirit. This house, um, I think it's overdue. I know there's been a lot of changes since we've last um, done a session with you. Um, so Mary, if you're here with us, now's a chance to come forward and speak with us. Let us know what you might be desperately trying to get out and tell us. Um, the last session we had with you on camera uh, was an emotional one. Um, that one really had compiled a lot of information about the hardships you went through. But now we're having some activity stir up again, um, affecting, uh, well, Angela, Jarrett in different ways, um, and Colton recently. Oh, oh man. Colton's here. Mm -hmm. oh. Who said, said hello to you? Oh, hello. Interesting. Hello. Hello. Angela, did you have a question? Uh, yeah. yeah, I was just wondering if um, you were I'm trying just... to give us a message because you knew that we were Me. thinking about moving. Well, if we see her, so Mary, is that you? Step forward, confirm, please. Lady of the house. We call you Lady of the house. Our caretaker. Yes? See, it went off. Just to kind of verify again. And Colton, you can move that around a little bit. You can move it over. The to the K2 when we're having action. Mary, if that was you, lady of the house, can you make those lights blink again? Just confirm you're here with us.
Dan. Yep. Dan. Yep. Dan. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Dan. Biker Dan. Is that you? Dan. Yeah. He said tattoos. Dan. Yeah, and your friend. Did you see that? Dan. Yep, Dan. That's Dan. Joker? Joker? Hmm. Hmm. Well, Trickster um, has been uh, used to describe you, whatever the unwanted energy is. Um. Dan, are you the one that knocked my phone across the room the other day? That's a car. Help it. Is it somehow... Is it, well, with my thought, let me just confirm, see if this is not it or not. Is it some of the high emotion, high energy that is causing that? It's causing that phone to move, causing that door to fall off. I'm just going to say, the common one, of course, is a lady of the house, Mary, as we call her. Wherever she may be, if she's here with us. Is that she does not want us to leave. She is afraid of change. She does not really want us to move and leave this house with fear of who might move in next. Yeah, I'm feeling really anxious all of a sudden. Yeah. Like the panic feeling. Colton, what about you? Mm -hmm. in my chest. It went off again. Are you getting it, Colton? Or are you getting any uh, feelings? Mm, nothing yet. Okay. How, about, how about this? From one, about 1 to 3 a.m. last night, did your, you make your emotions known to Colton? That panic. Yeah. Anxiety. Fear. At 2 a.m. a few nights ago, it moved me to the point where it gave me vertigo and puke. It's not good. Feels this is massive heat wave and then dizzy and mm -hmm. and then spinning um, and almost passing out. And can't breathe and then I puke. At least want to confirm if this is us empathically picking that up off of your emotions, what you feel, yes. and then to help on the next level of how to cope with that. And another theory we have too is Angel's energy is feeding into it, feeding off of her anxieties and everything like that too. And this whole, fe almost like what Colton said, this almost wanting to leave feeling is just enhanced by this. Is this your memory, your emotions? Hey. The other night when you came to me in my dream, Mary, did you have a little boy with oh. you? Say that name again, please. Uh, 
Look over her, like I keep right well. That's why. Why do you think I went over there? Yeah. That was the other ah. one that's standing ah. behind me. Well, yeah, I feel air air from this way, but every right. once in a while, it I did. Felt it like felt a, like. like Something. Almost the point when I was like opening the door real quick and shutting it. It's like that. I felt that. We made effort to love this house and the spirits that came with it. Of course, we expect that same respect back. Did you see a big heavy set guy in the overalls? <laughs> That's more validation. That's how he's been described. One Who? One of them? From uh, India's old house. Yeah. 
the old sailor guy. Sailor? Dude, yeah, he always smelled like fish. He ate a lot of pickled herring. That's why I call him the sailor guy. He literally smelled like pickled herring when he showed up in the morning. You're wondering if that isn't Paul in one of his forms. Well, I know when Mary showed him to me, she showed him to me as a little boy. Right. And that is part, must have, was part of what she was trying to get through through to me a while back. Well, the night that we had the night asked, that I asked her, you to... yet, she showed me her, what she'd been through. Well, I felt it, literally felt what she had been through. And then, um... I didn't get his name, but I did. She showed me a little boy. Well, even if we say here, he has to go, but... <laughs> yeah, regardless, he needs to go. <clears throat> I know that when I get that feeling to leave, I mean, it's a reckless, mm -hmm. suicidal, I, I mean... It's a bad, bad, bad feeling. And I've been able to squelch it a lot better now than I did, you know, November, December, January, even February when I had problems with it. But when I was going through more of my own things as well, but I mean, I still... I don't act on the feeling anymore, but yeah. I still get the feeling. Same feeling. And it'd be great if that would just be gone and I knew what was my feelings and what was not. Because I'm pretty sure right now that most of it is not me. Because I can't, I can't explain why I'm happy why I feel that way at all, right. most of the time anymore. There's no validation for why I should feel that way. I'll just wake up in the middle of the night and feel that way, panicked, want to leave. All the evidence and all the findings that we've discovered over the years now have led to the final session. And uh, it was just a real quick, uh, intimate session, not very many people present. Um, uh, Angela and I went into the, what was the art room slash guest bedroom uh, to do the final session. Take with us. We remember you. Senor, 
lot in the office lately while we've been working. Just peeking. Are you being quiet because you're sad that we're leaving? Because we would like to say goodbye to you. Do you want us to do any kind of a final? Uh. Did you stop this device? Are you going to continue to visit this house? I was there. Thank you. That was about as clear as we've had so far. Yeah, we know you've been here. Some of us have seen you. Bye. 